why get an MBA? And then, what kind of an MBA to get? And what is it going to do for you? Because let's face it, an MBA isn't what it used to be. And the media says so, Elon Musk says so, even one of my closest friends says so. Well, he said, all MBA types are psychopaths. So even with that in mind, I'm so glad I did it. And yes, 400 grand. And here's why. There was this quintessential moment where I was sitting in a movie theater parking lot with my girlfriend at the time, musing over the, uh, the, the so very distant possibility of going to business school, not because I saw myself as a businessy type, quite the opposite actually, because there was a notion that I could give structure to my creativity, that I could use it for good, that I could make a living with it. It felt like a key to a pathway or maybe just wishful thinking. That was 15 years ago, and I've since gotten my MBA through NCAD's one-year program. I was selected as an MBA intern at Google, entered an MBA rotational program at Amazon, chat with my MBA friends regularly, and connect with MBA school alumni at companies I want to work with for informational interviews, and they even get back to me. So, heck yeah, did it impact my life. And call me crazy, I do it again. But does it actually make you a better human being? Or does it make you a better class of human being? No, and definitely no. But it opens your eyes, and that's what makes it worth it. Let me focus on five ways that an MBA is going to change your life. No better answers, but better questions. Sure, there is the introduction to subjects like accounting, uh, finance, strategy, marketing, product development, uh, organization behavior, the psychology of a, of a team and you in it. Um, statistics, data analytics, pricing, process. I went through all of this, but it didn't make me an expert in any of it. The MBA gave me uh, reference points for where these focus areas sit in a business, their relevance, when I should pay attention to them. As an example, think of um, Netflix making losses for eons, yet their valuation kept them going up, so cash flow versus profitability how negative profit or losses can be a good thing as long as you can pay your bills and stay cash flow positive. Revolutionary for me at the time. So as you understand what these various parts do and what spells out a healthy business, you grow more confident asking pertinent questions and also guiding others, hopefully, to do their part well. So it's a bit of a jack of all trades license. There aren't many aspects of a business that scare me today, although that doesn't mean I get excited at the thought of doing accounting. Number two, perform under pressure and do so safely. The program at most schools is two years, whereas I went to a school that had a one-year program. Regardless of duration, you can expect a high workload of studies and projects and assignments, and for most of them, you will work with a, with a team, with an assigned group. The group aspect is one where it actually causes a lot of friction because the intention, the educational aspect is you get mixed with a bunch of people who are very, very different from you. In a sense, it tries to mimic the worst of real life where you will deal with people, or should I say, come together with individuals to create something who you don't jive with. But you figure out a way to get through it, putting the mission first and not your ego. So those two aspects, high course load and friction in your group, will most likely push you to your edge, very far removed from just coasting along at your own pace. And it stretches your tolerance, your ability to cope, your ability to come up with solutions, and it's that aspect that I would say is the main differentiator from you just going on a spending spree on Amazon to buy a dozen textbooks or Coursera or binge listen to podcasts, because that you can do on your own, at your own pace. You will emerge more knowledgeable, but not necessarily as proven or weathered to perform under stress with tight deadlines and conflicting priorities or working styles because you were exposed to that within the safe uh, framework in your MBA. Number three, which doors to close? A major motivator in our society these days is FOMO, the fear of not being part of the next trend, the next topic or even conversation, the next wave of skills. And because the MBA program has this artificial pressure induced in it, there will be things, programs, courses, projects, parties and get-togethers, trips that you will not be a part of. At INSEAD we had a saying that the experience at any given moment consists of three things, studying, sleeping and partying. But you can only do two of those at a time. So which do you pick? And based on that, there are consequences. Think of your performance or grades, connections you make, memories you share, even job opportunities you have to forego. And you learn to witness life happening in front of you and for you to not be a part of it and to be comfortable with it. I fully realize this is me narrating out of a highly uh, privileged position where you have agony of choices, which many folks may not have. 
but I think that brings the point home even more vividly. Just because an option is there, that doesn't mean you need to take it or that it is even a healthy choice to make. Number four, the ties that bind. This is probably one benefit of an MBA you hear about the most, having access to an alumni network, um, essentially individuals who can relate to you because they've gone through the same experience. The unspoken rule of paying it forward applies and it's the ultimate payback of your MBA experience. That is uh, both for your career aspirations, but also for your personal life as people from the same flock have an immediate connection. A conversation started that introduces them on the same level. And all of a sudden you are having beers together, oddly confiding in each other along the lines, if, uh, if I could do it all over again, dot, dot, dot. And it's less so a club feeling with an air of exclusivity and more of a comfort level that brings these folks together. It's just really nice. And number five, at the top of your funnel, aside from gaining a high level understanding of uh, business dynamics, finding yourself in an academic boot camp, coming to terms with who you are and are not, and entering a group of like-minded individuals for life, it's the fact that you did it that pays off the earliest probably, because specific milestones, you apply and get in, and you get through the program, count as a sort of a signal to other individuals and prospective employers that you are made of the stuff they might be looking for. That might be arbitrary because no one will quiz you on your understanding or passion for accounting, but it is simply implied that you can operate at that level because the school has already done the filtering out. It's like a driver's license. You go rent a car, uh, they care about you having a license, perhaps a bit of driving experience, like I think 25 and up, but they will not insist on you parallel parking in front of them. It's implied that you know how to drive and that opens up a whole slew of options. Convertibles. Having said all of that, you can do and achieve all of these things without enrolling in an MBA program. But I guess that would be harder than using something that has a track already laid out. Everybody else understands what it is and you just show up and run. Results in your business, so evidence-based storytelling about your experience will always trump an MBA checkmark. Getting a team excited and creating a following for a worthwhile mission you are on, yes, please, send me your resume. And being a single parent uh, with two jobs to make ends meet, I can't even imagine what real life pressure that is. It beats out an MBA graduate. So all in all, the MBA gave me access to more opportunities than I comparably had before, put me in a significantly higher income bracket seen over a medium term horizon. And it also enriched my personal life in ways I didn't anticipate. It didn't come for free though. Uh, it's not just the cost of a hundred grand, but there's also a reason why some call it divorciate. But that's for another video. If you have an MBA and feel anything is missing that you definitely got out of your business school extravaganza, uh, or you think I'm full of it, then don't hold back. Share it with us in your comment below. Thanks for watching.